Alright, howdy folks, and welcome to Always NES Awakening. Uh, my name is Paul, I go by Infinite Lives, and we're porting Always Awakening to the NES. Um, if you're watching on YouTube after the fact, I'm still like two weeks behind posting those, but there's links in the description to the recap at the end, or anything semi-interesting, and that's where I put links to the current build if you want to test it out. Um, so last time, let's switch over to CRT real quick. We got ladders working and some, um, the vines kind of. So when Zoe lands on the vines, her vase turns blue. And then I just reset that whenever she climbs a ladder. Um, there's still some work to do with the ladder because, as you see, once she climbs the ladder, she's basically levitating. She's doesn't get off out of ladder mode until I hit A. Um, but we do have her snapping to the ladder properly and she has to be mostly centered on the ladder. I only check one tile above her uh, to um, so there's ladder movement so there's a couple things. One, she shouldn't be able to move left or right when she's on the ladder. She should be stuck to it. So uh, the other thing is, is all of the XY code is still um, releasing character animations anytime soon. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. For, for now, I'm still working on getting all the different once I feel like we have all the states um, and she's interacting with everything like I want then I start working on that to some degree um, I don't want to get into it too early to where I'm doing making decisions on animations well one thing I know that we're gonna have I don't know, they're going to have issues, but I'm concerned about is tile count for um, all of her different animations. I think Zoe is going to use possibly over half of a pattern table. But I don't, anyway, it's kind of a whole can of worms. So trying to focus on this stuff first. And we'll need these states to define or to, to base the animations off of anyway. So let's see. Right now, pushing left to right in the D-pad just goes and and uh, makes those checks. We're gonna really do those in gamepad. So she only moves at a speed of one. We last time we implemented speed of one point five. Um, in the jump, but we just don't have account. So I want to move this X, Y code, or sorry, X code to do it more like we did the Y. And that would also probably be the best way to block her ability to move left and right on the ladder. And we also have to handle getting off the ladder, so let's So where do we want to put this? Really, it's this 
routine is getting huge, but <coughs> I don't know if that's really a big deal. I think I'm going to put the X. at the end, maybe the top. Hmm. For the most part, X and Y, or the X, the X movement doesn't really depend on the state. Or the Y movement have laid, at least it's, as far as I know, those guys are going to get me some of the source code so I can kind of take a look to see how they did it. If I'm missing some, I don't, the movement doesn't feel quite right. It's like, it seems overly, I don't know how much of it is just because of the lack of animations. It makes it feel so, I don't know, fake or flat, I don't know. Animations go a long way, but. So then we'll go ahead and just put Yeah. <laughs> um, so if she's on the ladder, I jump to check Y speed. I don't check all the other states. Done. So maybe I can put the X, X movement after the climbing. Instead of check landed. So I'm going to take your word for that. I think you're right, Bridgewater. But well, and that was one of the other things those guys were giving me is the animation frames. I don't think it really, it seemed to be somewhat easy to see just from the recordings, but some of the stuff I wonder, I may as well. If I'm not waiting, if I'm, I'm not going to wait on it, but if 
they're sending it over than jumping into it. Might not be the best use of time. So, I think I want another frame counter. I wonder to. It seems that her X movement is the same 1.3 pixels per frame. But Gonna try to polish or change the physics until we get into the animations because it's too hard to make good judgments of it. Know if it feels right or not. I don't think I'm actually using so X speed yet. No. So if she's moving to the right, that's a positive speed. Moving to the left, that's negative. Mm. So I'm setting the speed and then oh, it seems kind of silly. speed lets me do things like override it. I can have the speed of one because of the D-pad, but then later on I can override it and then perform the comparison. Um. 
Okay, so... I'm actually going to put this at the top. Okay, so to start, we'll do the X. If left is not pressed, we'll. Hmm. We're going to have some code here that I. Uh, maybe we just need to do it within there. So to get an average speed of one and a half, Increment the frame, and if it's odd or even, then we'll set it to and one branch not equal. frames speed of <laughs> I think we can what's the difference between doing a a known branch and a jump. As far as timing and 
so a branch is two bytes and plus one if it succeeds so it should where, where it's a note so it's three cycles two bytes most of the times and a jump i think is three bytes probably also three cycles three bytes three cycles so because it's not storing the address it's a relative address it saves a byte Should be fine. Why is I don't know why my frame why my highlighting is mad about that. equal oh I know why no I don't that's weird so I Is it because of my, I have this right, a PPU memory cycle is 166 nanoseconds wide. Um, grab my notebook. So, uh, P, uh, oh, that's pal. It's like 370 nanoseconds. The read cycles at something like 2.68 megahertz. It's, I think it's one read cycle per two pixels. Something like that. There's it. It's not well like documented in the wiki and stuff like that. Hundred nine. It's like 190 nanoseconds for read low, and like 180 for it high. I have a feeling I. Just thinking about my dual port stuff. So why, oh did I define that, oh I did, that's, maybe that's, is the highlighting that smart? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, if you have, do you, are you talking about using single port memories in time, you know, multiplexing them in some manner, or it's it's not trivial. I'll put it that, I'll put it that way. Um, but to some degree, it depends on how much parts you're using. Um, I'm trying to do it with minimal parts. Got some five twelve by eight S Rams. Um, I'm doing it with seventy nanosecond flash, but my my CPLD clock is like 21 megahertz or something. It's 20, 22, somewhere in there. It's not perfectly defined. Um, and so each CPLD cycle is like 45-ish nanoseconds, 45 to 50. And so I do two cycles for flash, and I should be able to do one cycle for SRAM. Um, so I I'm still working on it, but you don't need overly, you shouldn't need overly fast memories if you are doing everything right, but you need some intelligent logic in between things to get everything right. I still haven't got it perfect on all consoles. Oh yeah, 10 nanoseconds is playing. Is it? Asynchronous SRAMs, 512, they're some pretty speedy ones. Although I'm used to using low power SRAMs to, for battery backing reasons. I use those not well, like they're low power and then not low power. I get I don't know, regular and the regular ones are faster. I usually use those for CHR RAM just because it's smaller footprint. Check All right. So do the same type of thing except to use positive values. Uh, 
I feel like this code is terribly inefficient. So check first if can't move left right due to some state will zero it then. So if we're climbing, then we're just gonna zero her X speed. What kind of a Curious what you're got sitting around for programmable logic or what you're thinking as far as orchestrating the whole thing. Um, Okay, so I she's climbing. I run all the way here to all the way ahead to check Y speed. Could go to check X speed. I don't know what. I got a lot of things jumping to check Y speed, so let's just do X last. Done Y move. So I probably don't really need this label. Okay. Copy some of this code. Okay, so moving, so positive is right, so this would be get 
Oops, negatives are moving left. Load zo x, add zo x speed. Oh, wait a second. I, uh, I, I finished the flashing of MMC2 and MMC4, but I did not get into trying to figure out where my visual bugs. It looks like my, my CHR banking wasn't working at all. Um, it's very possible I just didn't have the first thing you always got to check is are the pins mapped or the signals mapped to the pins you think they are that's like number one thing and I hadn't even gotten to that so I'll probably well, I don't know I got a lot of stuff going on but I need to get that done a months ago so I'm not going to hold on to it for the till the stream, but if I can't get it done before the stream, then we'll be working on it then, I suppose. So I need to, we need to pass the, So we'll load x speed, or load x, we'll add x speed, and we'll transfer a to x, and then we'll ldy, so y. Um, and then check oops, x collision. So moving to the right, load zo x, add zo width. Her x speed transfer a to x ldy so y check x collision I need to make this as a define It's a map. Check the collision. So we'll have this as um, Y move equals bit six. X move equals bit seven. And ladder check equals Zero, I'm pretty sure. Change this to Y move. Seventy nanoseconds PPU window and ten nanoseconds response time. Plus, I can just serve transactions. 
pretty much on a first come first serve basis. Yeah. And really, you, you, that's basically the way to do it. Um, but part of the thing that's tricky is like ROM, the ROM cell, ROM select delay is a pain. You have to wait something like 30-ish nanoseconds after M2 goes high um, and then check ROM select. ROM select trails. So so you need your, your state machines have to wait. There's no edge to go off of. You just have to wait. And so, yeah. There's a catch on writes, which are data valid on the rising edge M2 as well. Yeah, and I mean, you, the, the, they're probably valid well in advance, um, but you know, wait a few, uh, whatever your logic speed is, um, or just keep latching your data at all, really depends upon your schematic, really, on how you handling that movement of data. Do you have a, if you're picking off the 6,000 range CPU side, I ignore ROM slow anyway, don't I? Uh, you can, if you, wait. You, you're saying you're picking off 6,000 range, what do you mean picking off? You don't, if you're not putting WRAM there, if you're not, if you're not putting anything there, then you don't care, you can go ahead and fetch it and just assume every access is a ROM access. But if you're only wanting to, you're using that range for dual port RAM. Yeah, you wanna put RAM there. So you need to know whether the CPU is accessing ROM or RAM, whether you don't have A15, you only have ROM select. So to know whether A15 is high or low, you have to wait to see what the state of ROM select is after M2 goes high. You're designing a VIC-20 cart. Yeah, I've been wanting to do a uh, Commodore 64 cart and stuff like that. I randomly have a VIC-20 cart from a bunch of Commodore stuff I got. At least I think it's a VIC-20 cart. Yeah, so that's part of the trick is, or the annoyance of, the annoying thing is, is they put, they sent A15 on the expansion port on the bottom of the NES, but, and then they give, they give you 10 expansion port signals on the cartridge, but it makes things, so many things so much easier if they would have given you the A15, but Famicom didn't have A15 either, so I'm in this. I kind of decided that if I can't do it on Famicom, then I'm not going to do it on NES because then anytime I want to have something on NES and bring it over to the Famicom, then it's like, no, that doesn't work. So I just try to pretend those aren't even there. <clears throat> yeah, VIC-20 carts are, but there's, there's a good chance that there's connectors out there available for them or probably not perfect but I don't know I haven't looked into them but I think there's I know there's some different pitch stuff out there okay so X move
gonna find here. So this is ladder check. Cartridge port is a female connector on the main board, unlike the user port, which is male. Yeah. Uh, I have minor female. Uh, I haven't really searched around for that, but I feel like I've seen them on DigiKey and stuff. Okay, so so and with a block bit block x move movement is allowed so we load x we add x speed we store x done x move block X move transfer X to A and out bit out bit check state big twenty cost reduction motherboard that's not gold plated female yeah what is it so like tin or hassle is it is the cost reduction older I'm not that familiar with it okay so if ouch don't think I need to check any of these states so I can just done X move but I do check the ouch and I'll just set her face as blue still yeah earlier versions cost more money to make move filters on the video yeah So I think I'm handling X code similar to Y now. Done X move. She moves. Oh, she stopped. Oh, cause I, <laughs> I set the speed, and then her speed is set. Um, I need to clear it. If and the other thing that I don't know about, I guess I'll just leave it. But is like give her some acceleration. but one versus one and a half. So. So I think first I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with both of them. Pad left plus pad.
add right and So branch if not equal check left and if it's equal we're not pressing left right LDA zero STA zero X speed. Branch equal done X speed. Okay, so I'll check left. Um, but if it's, if we're not moving left, then we're moving right. Later versions of C64 are much better than the previous. Yeah, and Moss. Instead of CMOS. I uh, I like the Commodore 64 quite a bit, but I don't really like have any nostalgia for it. I picked one up a couple years ago because I felt like I needed to. I got the monitor before the I got the monitor just because it was good CRT, and then later on got the actual unit. But. I don't know. When you don't have nostalgia for it, it's hard to so many NES things I want to work on. So you're like, ah, get into C sixty four instead, but there's quite a bit of C sixty four homebrew going on and some good games out there that I one to be able to get into. Yeah, mine's a 102 or 1702. Yeah, copy of the C64 architecture. Although, is it? I don't know. I don't really know enough. I mean, definitely doesn't have near the RAM. But I mean, it's the same CPU. If it's running the same CPU, then it's running the same architecture, kind of. It kind of depends on what you consider architecture, I suppose. Okay, so we're moving right. We don't have to make this check because we know that left wasn't being pressed, so right was. Oh, and we don't have to Oh, wait, so this does, that's not going to work. I increment and then I and one. Okay, so We'll, incre we'll always increment her frame, and so I'll uh, LDA so frame X, and then we'll end that with one. Oh, but I don't have gamepad here anymore. would have the part of the gamepad that I care about if we didn't do it here. 
we didn't do this. Because I load gamepad, I and it. PP is a lot like, oh. Yeah, the graphics side. Um, I don't have to reload gamepad if I do that, but I do have to. Do a. I don't. I don't think I need to load and end it. Can I do a? I could do a bit test. I have to load a with something. I could also do. Oops. I could I could load it. I could add. I could store. Oh, and I don't want to compare. I want to and not well. I just want to check to see if the lower bit set. <coughs> All right, let's try that. Done X speed. Oh, it's pad. that done x speed I don't know how fast she's moving though Seems like she's moving pretty fast. Let's I feel like she kind of like man, accelerates too quickly like if you just wanna it should be like a I just tap it like for a few frames she only moves one uh, pixel or so Let's try the original out quick. Updating Steam, of course, extracting package. This is like this is why we make NES games. So we're gonna have to update and extract packages every time we want to play a game. Preparing to launch.
So if I'm not pressing the D-pad, then I could clear the frame count and as I move, I could increment the frame count. The only thing is, is going directly from left to right, if you can go a frame without pressing either, then I guess whatever. That's what you did. You kept your acceleration because you hit it that fast. She does it if I just try to tap it. So it was like two or three pixels. I can barely. She doesn't really. I just can't even push that. Part of it's like, what is it like on the actual NES versus... I'm just gonna leave it for now. I will go ahead and clear her frame count though. So I have a frame count I can use to change her. Speed, acceleration. So did we fix the, uh, before if she hit the vines in the X direction, she wouldn't, yep, there she hits it. And look at that, she can't move left or right on the ladder. Um, she still can climb forever. <coughs> so we need to have a check if she's no longer on the ladder. Oh, stuck. The jump does feel different with that faster X speed than just being one. But So let's let's handle when she climbs to the top of the ladder. What does that even I think she basically goes to a standing state. Yeah, because she can Oh, I never thought about that. So the ladders are blocking from a downward perspective like she doesn't fall off of them my I can't let her fall if she stands on the ladder right my whole it just a, a check for a uh... ladder my ladder bit will be there in my collision check if she's like over here yeah look at that it's gonna act the same way mine will
So, as she's climbing the ladder, I need to check at her feet. And if what's behind, oh look, she's like climbing, but her foot's still in the air. If the, if the tile behind her feet is not a ladder, then we need to switch to the standing state. And as I'm pushing down, if the tile at her hands is not a ladder, or then I switch to a falling state. Okay. <laughs> That's like a completely separate check. Do I need to check for blocking if I'm if I'm climbing the collision check is different than if I'm not, I guess. Well, not necessarily because I think you can have ladders that end in the ceiling. Like, she wouldn't be able to keep climbing. And same thing if she's going down a ladder that doesn't, uh, a ladder that ends on the ground, you still want to check below her she can't climb through the ground. So there's basically like a separate... Well, there's a collision check that I'm doing that still needs to happen. Cause like right here, she's climbing down the ladder. She hits the ground. If she hits the ground, if there's a if there's a collision as I'm going down, then she switches to a standing state. If there's a ladder that goes to the ceiling, I don't know if I have one to check that. But I think she would just be blocked. She would stay climbing, but she'd hit her head. So, Okay. If she doesn't have a Y speed, then I'm gonna skip over this whole section, which is true for standing or for the ladder as well. Because in my game. Here, I'm, I can't move left or right. She's still in the ladder state. So, <laughs> if there's a collision on the ladder going down, which I'm having, I need to switch to a standing state. Um, so, block Y move. So, movement is allowed. If it's not allowed, I'm just 
skipping over the Y movement. Um, but I need to have a check standing or climbing to standing, oh, which is also dependent upon whether up was pressed or down was pressed. Because I don't know at this, well, I mean, I, I can go off of the D-pad again or speed. So instead of block by move, check done climb the movement was allowed Okay, so check done climb. If we're climbing down and hit something, change to standing state. So LDA so state compare climbing branch not equal check ouch. that check and we'll just keep rolling into but the other thing I still haven't gotten there yet but I should maybe modify my map so that I go from a walking I should be able to walk on top of a ladder She can walk again. Well, that was easy. We still need to check the top of. Hmm. 
Okay. So this check state. If I'm falling, I need to change to a landed state because I How do we get here? Instead of check state, call this check landed. Oops, I have another one of those. Why am I? Oh, because if the movement was allowed. I shouldn't check. If the movement's allowed, then I didn't run into anything. I didn't run into vines or anything. So why am I? I don't need to check ouch. I, I should just go to, if the movement was allowed, then I check, then I just go to done Y move. But if the movement was allowed, I may be done. on the ladder So if we're climbing, so for up, need to check at her feet. For down, need to check at her head. So. I think I'm just going to take her, it's going to be similar to a ladder check. We only have to check one bite, but I'm, I'm just going to take her Y position and if we're moving, up, then I'm going to add her height.
Can I integrate this with the ladder check? Is if up is being pressed, need to check for an object behind Zo. Or if we're currently climbing. I'm automatically checking behind her head. And I'm saying I'm saying up check, but really it's an object. I think I'm going to try to combine this code. <laughs> Although, I am going to be running this code if I press up on the ladder. Push up. I'm gonna be making this check. I mean, I could say if she's not already climbing, I don't run this code, but. <coughs> to some degree, handling all of the up and down in one spot. But I, do, I have a separate state. So. Let's see. Could I could jump inside this code? skipping over all of the X but that's I I don't want to move in the X if I'm on the ladder anyway I thought I started writing some code here somewhere oh here if movement is allowed we need to see if we're still on the ladder Branch equal check object. Okay. 
jump here if we were already climbing. Up, we have to check our feet. Down, check it her head. So here I'm checking. Branch equal. So we will down Oops, branch of not equal climbing up check at her feet oh i don't actually well if we're not moving at all will we never come here because if we're not if we don't have an if we don't have a Y speed, <laughs> if, you, if we don't have a Y speed, then I jump to done Y move. In that case, I shouldn't be checking if we're climbing either. Shouldn't have to. But if we if we do have a Y speed. Allowed. Check still climb. Oh, if we're falling.
actually, I'm just going to do it in here. So LDA so state compare climbing branch not equal done y move We want to branch jump to, I'm going to try to jump on the other side of that. Done Y move is going to need a local. Check object. So if down is being pressed, we need to add her height. I'm trying to enter the following the code that follows with her height in the accumulator and then I can just I don't think I don't know if that's the best way to do it though. So LDA gamepad and it with pad down. I branch if it's not equal. If I did a branch if equal, then the accumulator would be zero. If I branched, it would not be, be whatever I put in here. So I think I want pad up and then branch if equal. Oh, but then that's the opposite logic that I want. <sighs> Tangled web. Let's 
So let's let's go ahead and do the because I need to put her Y. Her X position is always going to be the same. It's the Y. So instead of loading Y, let's add it. I don't want it. Why is this so hard? I just need to do two separate things. Okay, so X, her X position is in the X register. A load gamepad and it branch not equal. So we're climbing up. We're going to check our feet. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put her head in the Y accumulator, but we'll stomp the Y if we need to. If we don't need to stomp it, we won't. Down we check her head, up we check her feet. So load gamepad. If it's not equal, we're gonna check at her feet. LDA, we can actually just transfer Y to A. Add Zo height. Minus one, I guess. Transfer A to Y. Yeah, that wasn't that hard. Well, it was harder than it should have been. Yeah, use those registers, Paul. You have more than the accumulator. Okay. So we'll do the object check. We'll check for the conclusion. So if there was no object, we're either A, 
she pressed out up in the middle of nowhere we don't do anything or b we're no longer climbing so if so no object if we're in climbing state We aren't anymore. Um, hey, second, I go. My camera cuts off. Oh, yeah, behind me. Finite yeah. NES lives. Yeah, that's my. Uh, well, a couple. Th you see my ugly furnace and nonsense behind there. That and I, when I first started streaming uh, in the winter. It kind of acts as a little bit of a a, a sound dampener because there's like a so I it was like oh instead of when it was it used to be a chimney and stuff behind like it was just super ugly random junk behind me so I was like ah oh, this is actually the banner that I had set up from Portland I was like I'll just throw this up here and I've noticed that as well that it's it's cut it's often cut off to be finite. But uh, I can move my camera, but then uh, my like shelf I have here kind of blocked. I'm not necessarily uh, trying to put it up there for advertisement. Just easier than trying to figure out a green screen. I was just uh, it, it was immediately available. The INL's there though, so it turns it works out. Okay. Yeah, you also stream for your reason. Oh, I don't. Do you stream on Twitch? I don't know if I've ever. I don't know if I realize you stream. Opposite corner from the furnace. Yeah. If you're. Uh, I need to. Not. I don't know if I realized you. Well, I, I didn't realize that she's. Do you stream frequently? Or just every once in a while? Um, so. Depending upon if I'm climbing up, uh, now and then not too often. Are you on? Do you stream on Twitch, or are you on stream on YouTube, or something like that? Yeah, on Twitch. Okay, I have to make sure that I'm following you with notifications, though. So, thirty-three nanoseconds propagation delay for ROM select and M two. Yeah, that's about what I've measured, but. Call it 34, 30. I mean, part of the thing is, is like you have propagation delay of other, th you may, I mean, depending upon your CPLD or whatever logic you have going on, if you have level shifters, you got propagation delays there. Every Nintendo is probably not going to be the same. Slew rates, all of those, th it's like. I, I, I'd probably like double it for safety margin then add a couple nanoseconds uh, you have to respond transaction out inside about 350 nanoseconds for for uh, CPU yeah you've got well you have to the other thing that's unknown is what kind of setup time do you have to give the CPU um, 
So whatever whatever setup time is necessary, that eats into your budget also. Chain inverters, yeah, ring oscillator basically. I mean, most FPGAs have an internal oscillator. There's lots of FPGAs that are marketed as CPLDs and therefore have ring oscillators as well but yeah you need to 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 do the time multiplexing dual port stuff you pretty much need some sort of uh clock to be operating off of all of your your state machines Yeah, so you have startup time and CPU and an output latch in the patch. Oh, and, uh, good luck. <laughs> um, you also have the situation of eating into that time budget for the uh, PPU, if there's, if you if you're in the middle of a PPU transaction, then, but yeah, RAM needs to handle PPU operations while still look. Yep, yep. Okay, so if we're here, if up. Now standing on top of the ladder. If down, then we fell off the ladder. Okay, so. Curious too. Branch not equal. Fell off ladder. So we and I'm going to fall right off of it as soon as I am because I'm not considering the ladder as a blocking, which it isn't, but for down it is. That's going to be weird. ladder uh, check falling already defined so creative my labels so this is 
check falling state. This is check falling. It's really more of a check landed, but I think I already have that. Check. Landing, landed, they're different. Trailing 424. Check object, check the ladder, undefined. on the other side. not defined. What am I doing here? If the move isn't allowed, but we need to see if we're still on ladder. Well, I got rid of this. Moving right is already defined. Why? Okay then, jump forever. I broke my up jump by not Oops, why does that happen? See why did that happen? Because 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 so my frame counter
think I just broke my labels or something. Or my clearing frame. That would mess it up. If I stopped counting my frames. Um. So if we're standing, I clear the frame counter. All right, decrement. Well, I'm not checking at her feet like I thought it was. I think I'm checking at her head if I'm pressing up. So there's that. And I can't climb down anymore. Everything's going so great and I break it all. Let's look here. Because here the movement would like I, she's jumping, a wide movement is allowed. So, if the Y movement was allowed, then I'm going to this check ladder. But, I, if I'm not climbing, I want to exit this. Well, I shouldn't be here anyway. If I'm not climbing, I shouldn't check ladder, so... So the movement was allowed. I, I, I applied the jump. I load her state. I compare to climbing. If it's not equal, then I go to done with Y move. 
And if we're done with Y move, then we check for a Y speed. If it's if there is no Y move, then I go done with X move. If I'm done with X move, is up if up is being pressed. If there's no object, oh, then I'm doing this whole. I don't actually want to go to no object. I just want to be be done. RTSs. Hopefully that fixed it. There we go. Oh, I can climb ladder there. Okay. So I appear, here I'm acting as if she got to the top of the ladder. So I'm climbing up, I should be checking her feet. And that doesn't appear what I'm doing. So, I load Y, I transfer, oh, I should just LDY. Why is there a position? Load gamepad. And with up, branch not equal. But wait, what? If she's climbing up, I need to add her height. I transfer Y to A. I add her height. Oh, I need a branch equal, not branch not equal. Actually, at her height.
So this would be eight. She has 24 pixels tall. Oh, I'm subtracting one. I don't think I really want to do that. <clears throat> because it'll round to the next tile boundary, I think. It's like I'm off by eight. <clears throat> That's closer, I don't know why. I think it's just the one below. She doesn't stand on it. Well, there she's still on the ladder. But I, I can't climb up anymore. I broke my code. Because if there if there is an object climbing state Hold on. If there's if there's no object but we weren't climbing, then I don't want to do this stuff. skipped over all of this if there's no Y movement. She has to have Y movement to do the ladder check. If done Y move. If we're done with Y move for X if there's no X move then we come here if up is not being done well oh no but 
but I think she, I think she has a Y speed. Wait a second, is she jumping one pixel every frame? It goes up and then back down. Don't think I'm running my ladder code. Where did I do this? Okay. We are there. What happens now? I transfer X. All right, I load X with her exposition. Checking at her feet. I only want to check at her feet if she's currently climbing. This is what happens when you combine a bunch of code. I should have. Um, trying to do one piece of code for two different states. Probably not actually saving much code and making it complicated.
Yeah, see here, I'm climbing up. Honestly, if she's climbing... I think I need to separate this goat. She can continue climbing up if any part of her body is on the ladder. Part of me says, collision check for ladder should be, should check the two behind her and or those together. And what is that like? That's like a X movement. It's a lot harder to learn how to stop climbing than to start. Let's think about this through again. So, there's no X movement. <clears throat> Therefore, I completely down with the X and the Y, and we get here. If up is pressed on the D pad, we're going to make a check for a ladder or something else. We'll also jump here if a movement. And the Y was allowed, and we're climbing. I don't know if this is how I want the code to work, but 
So we load her X position. the top of her head. Oh, I did the wrong thing. So, I'm going to do an X move check, which checks tiles horizontally which I think will check normally I use it to see if she's running into some obstacle in the X but here I'm checking just the tiles right behind her because I didn't adjust for her height or width I went I went right in the center so in that case it's like an X movement I may have just fixed my code because I swapped out the wrong. I was setting her state to X move, which is messed up. Reset her face. Snap her to the ladder if she wasn't already. We don't, we don't need to do that stuff if she's already climbing. If she's already climbing, we don't need to do this. So, and if there's no object, then she's gonna Okay. I think I fixed it. Now. I'm just not sure if my Y is proper. <clears throat> I 
I also wish well, I should be able to climb up a little bit higher. So what's going on there? Whoops. Mm. Oh, and I realized why we're getting this glitching. It's because we changed the tile set. That's where the bank switch happens for the tiles, and so whatever tiles these bottom ones are, those row needs to be black so it clears that out. But I'm not sure how much. I think I might be done for the night. Um. Let's maybe create some more ladder testing situations, though. <clears throat> that wouldn't take too much. I don't have a very good ladder test. See? Yeah, these are actually bad ladders because they don't follow the meta tile rules. And that's why she's, these ladders don't count. That's why it looks like she doesn't get to the end of it. Um. I also want to test, okay, so she shouldn't be tall enough to start climbing on this ladder. And she's walking below it. She should be tall enough, and I'm pretty sure this works because I was testing over here, but she should be tall enough to start climbing on that ladder. I also need her to be able to fall from the ladder. That's bad. That's a bad tile, I think. From the other tile set, which messes things up. I don't know. Oh, that's why that was still here. If you have a stamp from a different tile set, it will still show it here even if you deleted it. Hmm. Okay. Also, what does it look like to climb to the top? hit our head so you can fall from the ladder you can climb and hit your head you can climb down you can walk to the edge of the ladder start pressing down 
All this ladder nonsense. All right, so let's save that. Export. As Lua. Room zero dot Lua, okay. Yes. So name create Lua create room zero. Copy room zero eighty room name table. Copy, paste, replace, and rebuild. Oops. There we go. So now that's more accurate. I just, it's put me back in the, because she doesn't f stand on the top of ladders yet, I think that's why it's broken. I mean, it's not completely broken, but. Um, I don't have a way to get over there. Because I can't stand on top of ladders and I can't jump over there. Bar for Dugan. So my gravity check my 
my downward needs to also check for ladders. But not up and not left and right, because ladders are only blocking. Well, and it's it's not even that they're blocking on the way down. It's that the very top of ladders are blocking on the way down. So the top of ladders is like a special case. Which, yeah. The letters are all bronze looking, which is unintentional because I think I signed the wrong palette. But. That's good. She climbs till she hits her head and. If she hits her head, I can kind of just float. That's not right. If she hits her head, I should automatically start jumping down, but it's like I'm still in my jump state. Um, yeah. Anyway, I need to. My test room is still not a very good test room. This is easier to do with the D pad. Not really. when I she does fall from the ladder she can't jump to hit that it'd be easier if I could let's just make my room a little bit easier to get around in that should help I suppose I should just move these tiled files into, move them where I want them, and then I don't have to copy them over. They're just where they belong. Do it while I'm thinking about it. Um, I don't want to make things a mess though. process I want to 
move. I just want to copy. Anyway. Let's uh let's call it a night. Do it quick. Slash this guy. I'm tired. So, this is a recap of stream, losing count, 25 I think, 26. Twenty-five, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, we, uh, oh, I've got the wrong controller in my hands. <clears throat> taught Lozo how to stop climbing the stream aside from just jumping so before when she started climbing um, she wouldn't stop until we jumped and she was allowed to move left right in the ladder so now when she's climbing I can't move left or right um, and when we start climbing up a ladder, once we get to the top, she stops. I don't, one thing that I, it's a, the tops of ladders are a special case that I'm not handling right now. Basically the, the tops of ladders are blocking in the downward direction only um because you should be able to walk pat walk into a ladder and climb up from a ladder but normally when you climb to the top of a ladder she should stand there now she does kind of stand there but that's because she's still in this climbing state that last pixel i also realize i can make this jump when i shouldn't really be able to Basically, she stays in a jumping state, even if she hits her head. So that's a to-do. If she hits her head, she should start falling or floating. Probably just falling. Anyway, um, and if I get to the bottom of the ladder, she falls to the ground. So instead of just checking if there's a ladder behind the top of her head or an object, I'm checking uh, her entire body. Um, oh, the other thing, I guess we, so ladders just, there's a lot to do, but previously, if you hit the ground from climbing down, she was still in a ladder climbing state. Now she's not. So lots of little code things that making ladders work more like they should, but there's still a fair amount of work to do. We're getting closer though. We also, oh, that was the other thing is her X movement is now we're using the speed, so it's one, one and a half. Um, 
Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, Sakanako's just talking about what he streams every once in a while. Um, but yeah, so I don't know what we're gonna do next time. That special case of standing on top of a ladder, maybe. I don't have a good way to do that with the way my collision detection thresholds are set up. The only thing I can think of is make the tops of the ladders a special tile or something. Yeah, lots of edge cases. So... Because it's only the downward movement and only the tops of ladders. I have to think about that. Um, but it'd be nice to start working on some sprite animations and things like that. We have a lot of her states. The other thing that we haven't started on is is her wand. She doesn't have that kind of get into her animations, but. Um, we could also start working on some sprites besides though some of the enemy stuff um, but yeah so we made some good progress hope you all have a good rest of your week and we'll catch you next time